About a month ago, I released a video about some secrets of the Chicago L. Namely, a few remnants that dated back to the old, pre-1943 system. Obviously, that video scratches the surface. And there are more remnants of the Chicago L. So let's get on the L and go to those places. Let's start not in Chicago, but in Evanston. And let's take the Purple Line. The Purple Line, despite being very short, does have a few quirks. Namely, this portion used to interline with the North Shore Railroad. This separate railroad would stop at select Purple Line stations, and Noyes was one of them. Well, where can I see the remnants? Well, if you look on the southbound track, you'll see an empty right-of-way. That empty right-of-way used to be the platform for the North Shore Railroad, to prevent passengers from the North Shore Line from getting a free transfer to the L and vice versa. Let's now continue our journey south to Wilson. Everyone knows that Wilson used to look super different. It was a local station and there were three tracks on one side and a fourth track that disconnected from the main section for a while before rejoining. But I am not here to talk about that old layout. I am here to talk about the target just a few seconds south of the station. You see, there used to be a yard at Wilson, but that yard was badly damaged in a fire in 1996. Since Howard Yard up north was expanded in 1993, there was little need to continue operation at Wilson. So that yard was cleared, and that just became a plot of land. In 2011, the plot of land was leased to Target and a few other stores, which is why you see a Target here. So the next time you see that Target, just know that a generation ago, there used to be a train yard right there. Now, let's go down south and take the Green Line. And on the Green Line, especially on the south side L, you can see old space in between the tracks. That is where the third track used to be, and was built because of an agreement that the south side L signed in 1907. Basically, they would add a third track, provided that they would also elevate the south side L. This third track was pretty handy as it skipped a ton of local stations. Now that a ton of stations were demolished on the Green Line, there was little need for express service, and the third track was put out of service in 1960. Now, the third track right-of-way has been developed, first with the 35th Street Station in 1961 and later in 1965, then with the Cermak McCormick Place Station in 2015. While we are on a Southside L, let's talk about the numerous branches it used to have. And for that, let's go to Indiana Station. Indiana Station is the perfect place to see those branches, because back then, the station used to be a hub, with trains going to Kenwood and the stockyards. But eventually, with time, those branches ended up closing. And after numerous renovations, the remnants become much harder to spot. For example, the southbound platform used to be an island platform, as there was an outside track. That outside track was the stockyards branch, as trains heading to the stockyards would start here. But other than the stockyards branch was the Kenwood branch, and this is where I got conflicting information. Some sources say north of the station lies the right-of-way for the branch, while others say that it used to be an old railroad made redundant by the stockyards branch. So if anyone from the Commons can clarify that old railroad right-of-way, that would definitely be appreciated. Finally, Indiana Station used to have three tracks but it was reduced to two tracks sometime in the 1960s. But you can see the old three-track structure on a southbound Green Line train, as there are odd, unused structures that are evident of a third track at Indiana. Now, let's head north to the Blue Line, and we'll start off by the Loomis Ramp. This ramp connects to the Cermak branch with the Congress branch, and Blue Line trains used this connection from 1958 all the way to 2008. Why was it discontinued? Well, in 2002, the Paulina Street Connector, or a portion of the Cermak branch, was reconstructed to allow Green Line tracks to connect to the Lake Street L. And in 2006, the Pink Line was created, taking over service to 54th and Cermak. And the Pink Line, according to the CTA, did a better job than the Blue Line in serving the Cermak branch, so they disconnected the Blue Line to it in 2008. Speaking of the Congress branch, and despite it being very problematic, it does have a few quirks. For example, the Congress branch is two-tracked, but has provisions for four tracks for most of its route. These provisions serve the purpose for providing future express service, akin to what was offered on the Garfield branch, which is what the Congress line replaced. 
but there was another reason why there were provisions for four tracks. If you were between Clark and Grand, you will see a tunnel opening. The tunnel opening are provisions for the Milwaukee Dearborn subway to take over the Lake Street L, and the four tracks would have acted as extra service for the Lake Street L. It would have been two tracks to Lake Street and two tracks to Logan Square. Let's continue taking the blue line up north and get off at Damon. And right after it lies a small plot of land that seems very off. Well, according to history, the blue line section here used to have two branches. One to Logan Square, which is what the blue line uses today, and the other to Lawndale. The section to Lawndale is called the Humboldt Park Branch, and most of the right of way is now covered with homes. Well, except a few places, and this opening is one of them. This empty plot of land is where the line would have branched to Lawndale via the Humboldt Park branch. So the next time you're riding through Damon, just know that 100 years ago, there used to be a junction just north of the station, similar to what you see just after Ashland and Lake. Finally, let's go to Logan Square. Well, not that Logan Square. This Logan Square. Logan Square used to be an elevated station when it first opened in the 1890s. But in the mid-1900s, when a rail line was being planned to connect to O'Hare Airport, planners realized that the layout of Logan Square would make the train go on an extremely sharp curve and would condemn multiple buildings. So planners thought that it would be a better idea to demolish the elevated station and reroute it underground. That is why Logan Square is now an underground station. Though you can see small spaces where the Logan Square used to be. For example, you have this odd building which gives some evidence that the station used to be here. This is because the architecture of the building is way different from the architecture of the other buildings around here, which is evident that this building was built much later than the buildings nearby. There are more remnants, but again, if I started listing every remnant of the Chicago L, I will be here until New Year's Day. So, this is it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.